morning, as we gather here for worship, you know our plans were to have another great, wonderful Sunday outdoor worship service, but weather had other plans for us. As we looked at what was happening and kind of planned the forecast for what was supposed to happen, it was supposed to continue raining through about 10 o'clock this morning, and getting things set up was just not going to be the best um, day for us to be outdoors. So we are gathered, a few of us here inside for in-person worship. Hopefully a lot of you are joining us here for our live stream worship as we gather today. Whether we gather indoors, outdoors, live stream, whether we gather as we had planned to or the weather changes things up a little bit, we gather in the name of a God who loves us, a God who gave us his only son, our Savior Jesus Christ, on the cross. As we gather this morning, just a few things to highlight for you as some announcements. One, just a reminder that next week, a week from today, is a communion Sunday. So you can sign up for your communion service if you're going to be here in person. If you're going to join us for the live stream worship, we would encourage you to come through our drive through communion, which is from noon to 3 p.m. And you come through, we've got a little short order of worship that we'll have available for you and commune you and those who are with you. A reminder, though, it's still, um, you can sign up for our confirmation classes and Sunday school classes. Sunday school has been going out for three weeks at 9.15 to 9.45. That's just a live stream event on our Zoom event. And then confirmation classes will start today at 6.30 p.m. And if you didn't sign up for that, if you don't have that information, get a hold of me, and I will get you the Zoom information for our 6.30 evening Zoom class. All right, well, now it's time to greet one another in the name of Jesus. If you're here in person, you can kind of turn around, wave, shake some hands to those who are there with you, those joining us on the live stream, and just some fist bumps, some hellos. Let's greet one another in the name of Jesus. to my family. I was planning on being outside in the sunshine this morning. <laughs> Things don't always work out the way you want to, do they? Please join me in prayer. We come now to you, our Lord and Savior Jesus, with thankful hearts for bringing us another day to worship in song and praise. How wonderful you are, Lord. We celebrate once again your death and resurrection that brings salvation to us all. Holy Spirit, open our hearts as we hear Pastor James' message based on your word. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Surprise. 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to, the, to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Well, this morning as we gather here, we continue a series we began two weeks ago now called Believe. We are exploring the Apostles' Creed, something that we say most often when we gather here for worship. And again, we described it kind of this way as we kind of look at the Apostles' Creed. When we say it from week to week to week, it's kind of like we're sitting on an inner tube on top of the water, just kind of floating along. You can see a little bit, but not very deep. Sometimes you take a deep study of something like the Apostles' Creed or some other topic in Scripture, you take a really deep dive. That's kind of like going, you know, down deep, all in the water, you got the scuba gear on. We're not going to get that deep because that would take weeks and weeks and weeks to really dig down deep in the nitty-gritty of the Creed. So we're going to do something a little more like snorkeling. You know, if you've ever been snorkeling before, we put that in. You can see a little bit deeper and a little bit more what's going on. So we have a little more depth of what we say when we say these words, I believe. Again, the word creed itself, it's the Latin for I believe. So what is it we believe? So to do that, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gift of this day. Jesus, for the gift of your love and Holy Spirit, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to hear your word, that your word would shape and mold us to be the people you desire us to be. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, as we get started this morning, I'll start with a question for you. And the question is, is this, what is a toy you remember playing with as a child? So think about this, you know, and for those who are gathered here in person or those gathering in live stream, you know, you might, we're all different age brackets, have different toys that you play with. You know, but one of the toys that I think about playing with is this guy right here. I don't know if any of you ever had one of these Bozo the Clowns, you know, that, that you, you give a good punch to and his nose squeaks a little bit. And the great thing with Bozo, you, you could do what? You could punch him and he does what? He, yeah, he bounces right back again. You could hit him on this side, he bounces back up again. Hit him on this side, he bounces around again. Hit him behind and he bounces back up again. You know, and, and it doesn't really matter how hard you hit him, except for he's on the stool here, so I can hit him hard and knock him off the stool. You know, no matter how many times you punch him, he kind of keeps bouncing up. Now, Bozo is not magical here. That's not why he bounces up when we punch him. He bounces back up again because of the foundation that he has. He has this heavy foundation of sand at the bottom. So when you hit him, he's going to bounce right back up again. No matter how hard you punch him or kick him, he's going to bounce back up. And Jesus, Jesus once told a story a powerful story about foundations, about the power of foundations in our lives. And the context here from Luke 6 is what's called the Sermon on the Plain. Not plain as in, you know, on an airplane, but plain as in a meadow, a grassy area. The people were gathered out there on the plain. They were listening to Jesus as he was teaching. And as they listened to him, you know, they were not falling off to sleep. They were not on their phones. You know, they had put their phones down. They closed their laptops. He had their attention. They were hanging on every word that he said. And Jesus says, now let me tell you a story. Now the stories that Jesus told we call parables. And parables are stories. They are these fictional stories that have a real-life kind of, you know, punch to them. They help us to encounter who our God is and the relationship we have 
with our God. So Jesus goes on to tell this story, this parable, with this real-life punch about two people who were building a home, and each of them had a, two different kinds of foundations. A powerful story about two foundations and how those foundations can affect our lives today. And Jesus presents this story by beginning with a rhetorical question. Let's read that question together, Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? And if you've ever done that as parents, ask the kids why they don't do what you say they should do, or if you ever, ever ask that as a kid, you know, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Now that phrase, Lord, Lord, the first thing to note is Jesus did not say, hey, don't call me Lord. You know, he accepted that title that they gave him. But that doubling up of Lord, Lord was an intimate way of talking about Jesus. It meant that there was this intimate personal relationship that they had with Jesus. Lord, Lord. But he asked this question, and he asked this question. He is not looking for any answers for them. Again, it's rhetorical. He doesn't want them to give excuses for why they're listening but not doing what he says. What he wants is commitment. He wants them to hear what he says and to put his words into practice in their lives. This powerful story about two foundations is a story for our lives, our relationship with Jesus. Because again, Lord, Lord implies this personal relationship. So they're saying, you know, hey, Jesus, we're all gathered. Do we hear what you're saying? I love you, Jesus, but there's hate in my heart. I love you, Jesus, but but not that kind of self-serving love that I should have for others. I love you, Jesus, but there's no generosity in the stuff that I have and the money that is mine. I love you, Jesus, but, and you just fill in the blank, that was the people of the first century, Palestine, who were listening to Jesus. I love you, Jesus, but. I love you, Jesus. Yet, then Jesus goes on to tell this parable, right? There's these two guys who build a home. Luke 6, 48, let's read these words together. It says, they are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on the rock. So the one who hears, he says, my words and puts them into practice is like the one who builds a home, not on the topsoil, but who digs down, who does the extra work to lay it on this firm foundation. Jesus is calling us to hear what he has to say to us, to hear what he has to say to us and let his word speak into our lives, into our identity, into our relationships with him and our relationships with others. Now, in the Old Testament, the word for hear is often translated as obey. So when we hear the word here in the Old Testament, that God is calling these people to hear his word, he's really calling them to obey. So again, it's not just, hey, I heard, you know, one in one ear, out the other ear, but it went in and it sunk down deep into my heart, into my hands, and into my very life, to my very existence of who I am. The New Testament's got a similar sense. It's got kind of this hybrid sense of hearing, that we, we hear, we don't just hear, but we really hear. Hear. And that hearing, again, it begins to shape and transform us. That's really the power of God's word, is that it shapes and transforms who we are. So Jesus doesn't simply want us to hear his voice and then walk away. He wants us to hear his voice and act on his voice. And as we do that, as we build our lives on him as the foundation. Then when we encounter storms, because we're, we're going to encounter storms in life. I mean, think about what's going on right now, just in our world and in our community. There are a lot of storms going on. There are natural storms. There, there's nature that is ravaging fires in California and Colorado and Utah to the hurricanes that have been down south. Just the, the unrest that's in our communities, the civil and political unrest, there is, there's the racism, there, there is violence, there's uncertainty with economics, 
all of this, there's this storm that's going on. And, and with COVID-19, a lot of us feel strained in our relationships. But when the storms come, what foundation have we built our lives upon? And Jesus is inviting us to build our lives upon him. In fact, this is, this is the truth that Jesus wants us to get, that if we build our lives on him, build your life on Jesus as your foundation, so you can weather any storm life throws your way. Build your life on Jesus as your foundation so that you can weather any storm life throws your way. Now, let's go back to the first century people. And Jesus first spoke these words. And again, he says, why do you say, Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? Why do you act like you're listening, but you're not really listening and taking ownership with what I say to you? Those people in the first century, you know, they, they, they had hate in their hearts. They weren't willing to forgive others. They, they grumbled. You know, they, they were not generous. They, their love was self-serving. And if you look at that, how that was in the first century and you look at our lives... That's not much of a difference, is there? In fact, you know, it, we look at what those people there struggle with, and we see that in our lives, too. Then when we hear the Lord say to us, to you and I today, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? You see, even as we build our lives on Jesus as the foundation, we are not always going to obey him. Because the foundation is not our obedience. The foundation is Jesus. He is the solid foundation. As we build our lives in him, yes, we're going to weather the storms. Because no matter how much life may push us around, you know, we have a solid foundation, kind of like Bozo or the clown here. And we might get moved and we might wiggle around, but we're always bouncing back up again, except for now he's not coming back up. Back up again, Bozo. We build our lives on Jesus. Now, but you talk about this, building your life on the foundation also means that we have a fresh start. Because we build our lives on Jesus. And while Jesus is calling us to obey him, he calls us in that obedience in his grace and love. That our obedience is a response to the grace and love that he has for us. That often we have as part of our worship as we gather here, we have a time to confess our sins, a time to say, God, I have not obeyed you. Uh, maybe I did over here and over there, but over here, I'm harboring hate in my heart. I don't want to forgive that person. I don't want to be generous. Lord, I, I am struggling over here, and, and I just really want to obey my own sinful flesh, my own desires, and not you. And yet our Savior calls us again to come and confess to him, to acknowledge our sins. And trust that as we built our lives on him, we're building our lives on the one who gave his life us, that in him we might have life, that we might have a fresh start each and every day. Building our lives on Jesus is building our lives on the God who loves us so much that he gave his life for us, that we might have life in him. It is his grace and love then that transforms us and shapes us and our obedience and our hearing and living out his word, living out his word in our life, living out his word in our community and in our world. So that we are shaped by his love. Our obedience to his love is a response of gratitude for the love that he's given to us so freely in Jesus. So here's a challenge for us as we move forward into this new week. What step will you take this week to build your life on Jesus Christ as your solid rock? Maybe you're spending a little time in prayer, and some time in, in his word, you know, opening up the Bible, you know, using a devotion. Maybe it's saying, you know, Lord, um, it's answering his call to be generous. Answering his call to stand up for those who have no one to stand up for them. For those who need an expression of God's love in their life. That building our lives on the solid rock of Jesus means we build our lives on his love. And out of that, the Holy Spirit works and transforms and shapes us to be the people of his love. In obedience for his call to live and to love others as we have been loved by him.
This is building our life on the solid rock, building our lives on Jesus. We pray. Lord God, we thank you and praise you for the great gift of your love. Lord, we know that we are going to, if we're not already facing storms in our lives, we're going to face those storms. Lord, it's easy for us to be knocked down, but we are reminded again and again that in you, as our solid foundation, we weather the storms. We know, Lord, that you call us to obey you, to follow you. Lord, we don't always do so, but we also know in your grace, you invite us to come to you, to acknowledge the times we have put our fingers in our ears and ignored your word for our lives, and to be reassured of your love and forgiveness. Lord, as we confess now our faith in these ancient words, we confess our faith in the God who loves us, the God whose love shapes our lives. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, let's confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we come before God again to confess and acknowledge that we have not always listened and always obeyed, but we come because we know he's a God of grace. And our faith, our lives are built on the foundation of of that grace in Jesus Christ. We confess together. Lord, we say we believe in you, but we are often distracted from what matters. We say and do things that reveal our lack of faith. We strive to control our lives according to our own wants and desires. We choose paths that lead us away from you. Today we acknowledge our sins and confess our shortcomings. With humility, we ask you to forgive us and help us to follow your will for our lives. Empower us by the Holy Spirit that we may say with the gospel writer, I believe, help my lack of faith. We hear God's promise. There is grace and forgiveness for all our sins in Jesus Christ. Hear God's promise to you. All of your sins forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth, awake with the Holy Spirit, embodying your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. This time we respond to God's grace for us in Jesus Christ. It is that act of obedience, but again, it's an act of obedience out of response to his grace through our tithes and offerings. You can do that through your check or cash gift. You can do that by going to holysavior.org and giving online or the text giving at 84321. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, and enter your email address. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. And if you switch over to the My Profile page, you can update your contact info, link to a bank account, and review your giving history. To get started, visit our website or download the Church Center app in your Android or Apple App Store. We pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus is truly our Lord and Savior. We try to hear and put into wor- His words into practice, but we sometimes fail to do so. Please help our shortcomings and help us to build a foundation based on your word. Lord, as the world fights against the COVID-19 virus, 
We pray for all those that have come down with this terrible pandemic disease. We especially pray for Travin, Judy's grandson, who is 20 and has COVID-19. We also pray for continued healing for Jimmy as she recovers from foot surgery. We pray for Troy, who has uh, checked into the hospital. We pray for the family of Jill's Uncle Joe, who passed away. Lord, we ask that you wrap your arms around these and others that are in our prayer list. Bring healing to their lives. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now for the blessing. Please join me. As a Lord of faith, we have gathered to worship. Faith, we now return to the world. Go out to share the story of faith, the story of life with the world around us. We share our faith in both word and deed, in speech and in action. As you go out to give living witness, as you go out to testify to God's love active in the world, go knowing that God goes with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Miss us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and grace. Let us read your love possessing, triumphant, redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and Savior, we need your help to stay connected in such a disconnected time. Go to holysavior.org and fill out the connection card. This helps us communicate, connect, and care for the Holy Savior family. Thanks. Stay safe. God bless. Goodbye. Hey, it is great to worship with you again this day and wish you God's richest blessing. Just a reminder again, next Sunday is the Communion Sunday, so if you sign up for the in-person worship, indicate how many will be communion. If you're joining us for the live stream worship, of course, I encourage you to come through next Sunday from 12 to 3 p.m. And again, don't forget, we've got Sunday school going on from 9.15 to 9.45 via Zoom, and today our confirmation classes begin at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. God's richest blessings on your day. Have a great week.